Good morning, Corey from Rockpile, how are you going? At uh, Rockpile, we're a bit limited on flat ground and like undercovered area. Come winter and it's raining, you know, th things get a little bit of a pain because everything just ends up in the shed, all right? Our plan is to extend a roof off the front of the shed. We need to put two posts in. Now, you can see I've done the footings. I did these about a week ago, so they're nice and hard for when we, when we drill into. Now these are 500 by 500 square by 600 deep, and the bottom sort of 150 mil is kind of belled out on the bottom, so the footing goes down and kind of out at the bottom. So they're not going anywhere, so there's two of them, and that'll be where our posts stand up from. And then there'll be basically a steel frame that does the perimeter across and back to the shed and then we just infill it with a bit more steel i love steel and uh some roof purlins roof joists whatever the word is and then um yeah we'll be ready to sheet so these are the two posts that i prepared earlier because my plan is i like to prepare and measure everything and get everything ready so when the time comes, it's just boom, 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 and you've got a carport. Posts are 100 by 100 by three mil thick. Uh, the height is irrelevant. I'm not really gonna go into measurements for height and stuff because that'll all, that's just to suit us. Like those measurements, if you're gonna build something like this, will be to suit your lay of the land and whatnot. Plates on the bottom. These are just 200 square, 10 mil thick. Uh, they already had these holes in. But I just had to re-drill some more holes in here to suit the bolts, which we'll show. Now this post is the, is the exact same as the other one. But you can see here how I've notched out the, the top. Because we're going to be using uh, 150 by 50 by 3 steel as the main beams that surround the perimeter. And you can see here that I've already cut the, the angle of the pitch in so when the beam sits on we're going to have about a two and a half degree fall. I know two and a half degrees, it, I wouldn't go any less than that for fall. Uh, really three or four should be a minimum I feel. In this case we want to keep as much height as we can. I'm not worried about the two and a half degree pitch. I think it'd be fine. That's about just over 200 mil fall over six meters which I think will be ample. How are we going to hold these down? These bolts here, these are called uh, Kemi Anchor bolts. What Kemi Anchor is, is it's a two-part epoxy type glue. There's two parts inside this thing. It has a special nozzle that, I don't know how well you can see that, but it has like a little uh, bit inside it. When you squeeze the goo out, it mixes the two, the two together like, you know, like we're dancing type thing in there like this and it comes out as a mixed product now these are 160 long by 12 mil in diameter they are pretty strong once they're glued in the concrete like you'd be surprised they're very strong so we've got four of them per post and we've got a series of drill bits an 8 a 12 and a 14 these are 12 mil so you want to have a 14 mil hole so you want a little bit of room around the hole for the glue. Each different size Kemi Anchor has its own recommendation for a drill bit size. So but generally it's about two to three mil bigger than the bolt. Plastic packers, they come in all different thicknesses, you see. All right, they're great just for fine tuning stuff. Uh, now, how do we get the post level, you might be thinking. I'll show you a little demonstration here. I have these little shims, all right? These are just two mil steel offcuts. So once we get the the holes drilled and we're sitting the post up. We sit these shims basically on the concrete and they go in the middle of the post like that. The post will sit on the shims like this and there'll be a little gap under here. And obviously we can adjust the height with the laser by putting more or less shims in. But generally you probably want about a 10 mil gap and we'll have these bolts sitting in, right? And they'll go down into the concrete. Now you can kind of visualize as you tighten the nuts on the bolts, it's gonna rock it around, and that's how you get a level. What I need to do is I need to get a string line, and I need to run it on the inside of the shed against the posts, and run it out there. The string line is gonna be 25 mil off the shed, so we'll get two tens, two 10 mil packers, 
and a 5, 25 mil. So I'll screw that to the shed and that's what our string line will go on to. Right, so we have a string. Now we'll go pull that tight down the other end. All right, so I've got my string, got my little bit of rod to bang in the ground to hold it. Kind of just visualize roughly from here and then I'll go measure it. Oh, I better put the orange side up just so I know I don't trip over it. Tell you what, that's pretty good. I reckon we're gonna be close to 25. That's pretty good for 25. Now, I need a measurement five and a half meters out to approximately the center of the post. All right, so five and a half meters is what I wanted to the center. Oh, hey, chicken. Um, you know, give or take a bit, it doesn't matter. As long as when I measure the other one, they're both the same. Now, obviously, when we're because we've got the grounds on the angle, the measurement is not going to be dead true because we're not measuring at level, we're measuring it parallel to the ground. But if I just go five and a half, we'll call it, we measure 200 mil, like so. So we've got our post location. Let's go grab a post. Hopefully this is the right post. Because, you know, we do have a left and a right. And yes, it's the right one. Okay. We just give that a little wiggle until we're close to the line. So we just got a just you know, standard little hammer gun here. That's plenty good enough for this job. Uh, we're going to start with a 8mm drill bit and then work our way up to a 12 and then a 14. You can see I put some tape on the drill bit. That's how far I need to drill down into the hole. I don't want to go overly deep, otherwise the bolt may disappear into the hole. Let's drill. I've got an earplug or two even. Started them off, I drilled about 50 mil deep with the smaller drill bit. Now I've got my holes, now move the post and then I can, I'm gonna go and drill the rest, like the rest of it with the bigger bits now. So we've got the air compressor here. I've drilled the holes. Now I'm just going to blow them out. When you do that, just watch because uh, a lot of stuff could come out of the holes. Uh, now what I like to do is use just some water uh, and I'll give the holes a little... Uh, a little misting and then we blow them out again now I'm pretty happy that they're gonna be dust free for when we put the glue in and we'll just give it a little nudge got Mrs RP to come out and we double check the uh, measurements both ways with this post and the square and we're 100% happy with the location of it okay so we got our stuff ready to go so we've got the nozzle remember the little nozzle it's got the little spirals inside it that mixes the goo screw that on nice and tight now i'm going to give it a few pumps and you'll see this will fill up with goo it'll be two different colors and then we'll just give it a little bit on here until the goo is all one color and then we're good to go into the hole okay so you can see that is kind of mixing the all different colors in there as it's coming through the tube and now we'll go on here we'll give this a bit of a all right i'm pretty happy that that's all one color now now one pump of the trigger gives me about that much so i probably want about four of them in each hole and start down the bottom one two three Four, put this in, give it a bit of a twist and a shuffle and you'll see that it will get suction and it's hard to move, right? So that's how you know you've got a good bond in there. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. Now you'll see that these do have a little uh, he uh, hex head bit on the end. So you can use like a little driver uh, if you wanted just to spin it slightly to get it, help it turn but I just use my fingers now I'm just going to give this another little uh, bit on the ground here and that'll be the bit that I test 
for hardness in about, say, an hour. As luck would have it, um, just so happens all these bits of steel have been cut to the right length and the right miters and the right angle of the dangle and we've got a sling on ready to go. <laughs> what are the chances of that? So, uh, the plan is to get the excavator, lift them up, carry them over there, and then basically get some sort of game plan happening with Mrs. RP, and then we'll try and see how this all goes together and if my measurements kind of all worked out. So we did it, we got it here. It was like uh, jousting on excavators. <laughs> That'd be a cool sport, wouldn't it? Wouldn't be very fast, but you know, you'd have to soup it up a bit. So we're we'll just gonna get some gluts, fresh uh, steel on the gluts. I love it, I love it. We've prepped it all, right? So this should go together pretty fast. Have the excavator here, yeah. grab the beam and bring it over. Yep. Okay. Alright, rip it away, baby. Yep. Nice and slow around. Good, good, good. The only time I get to tell her what to do. puzzle piece that bike fits perfectly uh, yeah I just need to roll the tops of that just in a little bit just got to pull it over a bit so I need to get a bit of a funky clamp thing happening this is called my left hand or right hand or third hand whatever I just call it something that I use you can see it's been used a bit you just weld it to two bits of steel and you use this to uh, like crank it in or crank it out so I'll just tack that on top and I'll give it a little like click click and that'll pull the two bits in together, tack weld it, like a good maybe 10 mil long, and then this will just snap off. in the thing and bring the over the top.
we got the majority of the frame up. Looks pretty bloody good, I think. And uh, I'm just gonna have a little potter around, just put some tools away. And then tomorrow we'll come back out and I'll just space those rafters out evenly and weld it. So, day one. Technically it's day two because on day one I did pre-cut all the steel. And it all fits together as I expected it to fit. Just another bloody cracker of a day at Rockpile. I tell ya, just looking around. Man, love this place. Just love it. Everything's looking good. I'm just gonna start welding and just work my way around. Welding, it's not very exciting. I would like to say, but uh, yesterday when we put this up, I'm, I, I am my own worst enemy, right? And I think I pushed it a little bit too hard with my foot yesterday and uh, it was kind of a bit hurting. Give me a little bit of grief last night, but my mind kind of takes over and goes, look, we need to get this to this stage to get it. I can't just leave, you know, three pieces to the puzzle not installed. So that's why I pushed on. And I probably was a little bit, you know, do we call it grumpy? Do we just call it excited? Who knows, whatever. But anyway, had a good night's sleep. Had a beautiful focaccia pizza last night. Thank you, Mrs. RP, that was lovely. And we've even got leftovers for lunch today, so that's a bonus. <laughs> Apart from the joist against the shed, because I've got a, I'm waiting on the flashing. The flashing will come when we get the roof sheets. Um, I'm going to cut that in first and then push the joist back and weld it on. And this front one here, I'm trying to get hold of a certain size gutter that sits on, that'll sit kind of on top of that main frame. Uh, they're not sure if I can get it yet, so I don't want to weld this last one on until I know I can get that or can't get that and that'll determine the position. Next few jobs are, uh, I'm just gonna tweak the bolts a bit and make sure it's in the final position. Because when you weld stuff, stuff kind of like moves and pulls and twists when you weld it and it could, it could pull out of shape. So I'm just gonna double check that and then uh, spray paint all the welds with the cold gel. Um, and I'll probably fill up the underneath of the, the steel plates uh, with some stuff. I'm going to use this goo, like the, the Kemi Anchor stuff, to fill between the steel plate and the concrete underneath to give it a good uh, even surface that sort of takes up the cavity, you know, that little gap we've got in there. I'm happy, I've checked everything, everything's good. Uh, normally in this situation you could either use a like sand cement, sort of like dry pack mix like two sand, one cement. You mix it so it's fairly dry and you pack it under with like a little trowel. But we don't have any of that and we have this and this will be fine. It's just expensive. You wouldn't use this normally because um, it's just ex too expensive for this situation. But we have it. So... Now I'm confident that's gonna be uh, good for what I what I want it to do. All right, I'll go squirt stuff under that other one, and then uh, I'm just into some spray painting. Painting's done, welding's done. The whole structure is done. What we need to do is measure the roof sheets, and I've got to find out about that bit of gutter. Remember that measurement for the gutter? I've got to find that out. Um, and the flashing for against the shed. So I still need to cut that in, but I don't want to cut that in until I get the flashing. As far as this job goes, it's done until we get more gear, like the roof sheets and gutter for it. So, hope you enjoyed. Any questions, leave a comment. Don't forget to hit the uh, little notification bell so you know when we're bringing out some videos for you. See you on the next one. Later.